Hello everybody, welcome to Box Up Close. My name is Chris Lloyd. Sorry I haven't done a video in a while. Um, I hope you're doing well and staying healthy and reading lots. As ever, please like, comment and subscribe to the video, ring the bell for notifications and follow the link in the notes below to my bookshop.org page, which is my affiliated store, which you can buy things from. Uh, everything that I mention in these videos is listed there, as well as some other books I'm looking forward to and things I've been teaching. If you do buy from there, I may get proceeds. All the information's down below. So today I'm talking about Julie Myerson's latest book, which is called Nonfiction, a novel, which came out in 2022. If you saw my brief TikTok about it, I had wanted to read it last year and for various reasons, I didn't get around to picking it up. And I really wish I had because it was as good if not better than I thought it would be, actually. I'm a big Myerson fan. I know a lot of people don't like her for personal reasons rather than literary ones, but I think she's doing really smart, intense things with her writing. Her first book, which came out in 1994, is called Sleepwalking, which blew me away. I think I found out about Myerson when she used to be on Newsnight Review. She was on there and she always said quite smart things. And I was like, who is this woman? And I looked her up and I, so I got that book. And it's about a pregnant woman who embarks upon an affair like late in the pregnancy. It is astoundingly good on like the body and sensation and feeling and sexuality and sensuality it is amazing. But it also then weaves in memories of a father who commits suicide. So people obviously read that as autobiographical because Myerson's father also committed suicide. And that's one of the things that's kind of plagued her, but also that she's now playing on is the extent to which her writing is about her own life. So after that book, she wrote some other great novels, The Touch in 1996, which is about a group of strangers who, or near strangers, who come upon a homeless man in the park and it sets off this kind of violent chain of events. And much later on, something might happen, which is about a murder in a kind of coastal village in Suffolk. And then Out of Breath in 2007, which is about a group of kids that kind of run off and kind of have this imagined life. And all of her books are kind of circling around the idea of childhood, the idea of dead children sometimes, the idea of trauma catching up with you, which I think she then kind of literalizes in 2011 with the book Then, which is a kind of post-apocalyptic book set in London. I'm not going to tell you anything about it because I don't want to give anything away, but it's about a mother and child kind of escaping. And there is a harrowing twist at the end that left me breathless. And then later on she writes this Hammer horror book um, when Hammer started bringing out these um, novels, which is kind of interesting, but then she kind of pushed that further into the book that came after it called The Stopped Heart, which combined kind of a ghost story with a story of infidelity and coupledom and this horrific trauma related to children that you don't find out about straight away. So she keeps returning to these themes over and over again. And alongside all of this, Early in her career, she was writing a column anonymously uh, called Living With Teenagers that eventually gets turned into a book so people found out who she was and who the kids were and people immediately started querying why this woman was writing so openly and honestly about her children who would one day read this stuff. And then when her own son started doing drugs and became violent and broke things in the house and pushed her so hard that she broke a rib. Uh, she and her husband kicked him out of the house and then she wrote a book about it, which he was around, he was like a late teen. People then critiqued that and he came out and the Daily Mail interviewed him and blah, blah, blah. So there's been lots of thorny stuff there around the ethics of writing, who gets to write whose story and so on. Do you get to write about your family? And that book, The Lost Child was the tipping point. And I think it's a really good book. She entwines the story of her son with the story of a kind of historical figure who she's investigating. However, this brings us to the present with non-fiction, a novel whose title already <laughs> is designed to perhaps annoy us, but also to kind of playfully wink at us and say, you've been doing this to me throughout my career. Why not lean in to the idea that even if something's a novel, it could be made up. And even if something's made up, it's still real or truthful and so on. So in this book, we have a couple, a kind of nameless narrator and her husband who have a daughter who has become addicted to various substances and they kick her out of the house. Myerson has changed the gender of this child from her own kind of biographical narrative. And the story is told in this second person you voice directed at the daughter. And it's in present tense, so it's very immediate and 
quite propulsive actually, I read it in a few sayings. It just steams ahead as you're desperate to find out what happens and it flits around in time quite a lot. So there's a moment where the daughter is at home and then she's in rehab and then she's in another rehab and then she's in a facility and then we're kind of jumping around always. We then have that interspersed with stories of the narrator's mother who is a really kind of controlling, mean woman who's really horrible. And we know too, biographically, that Myerson's own mother was abusive in that way. And Myerson was banned from her mother's funeral when she died. So we know that biographical story's in there. And then also the narrator then begins an affair with a man that she used to be connected to a long time ago. They bump into each other out of the blue. The ending is obviously surprising actually and shocking, but maybe not shocking at all. And you're kind of left suspended in a way that I thought was brilliant. The way Maya Sen has written this book is incredible. I think the second person works super well here. There's been lots of attempts at this of late, I think in fiction and other forms. I'm thinking of Kayla Bazuma Nelson's Open Water and even parts of Claudia Rankin's Citizen, where that you is both a specific you, a generalized you, is even the fourth person you, but here it's like very much directed at the daughter and that gives a really interesting sense of audience. The you kind of becomes us, the reader, right? We're kind of both watching this woman talk to her daughter as well as kind of inhabiting the role of the daughter and we're kind of implicated in a way that I think is purposeful on Myerson's part. She's getting us to sit in the story in a very particular way. And the present tenseness of it, even though it's jumping around in time, means that we're never quite sure what the timeline is. We have to kind of figure out where we are in time and I think that really accurately represents the experience of trauma, of breakdown, of anxiety, even of addiction, right? There's the way in which the form is mirroring what's happening to the narrator. She's kind of searching through and filtering her memories and thoughts and experiences. So in all, I love this book. I thought it was really good. People are going to disagree, but they're going to disagree. I would recommend it highly. It comes out in paperback in the summer. So do pick it up then if you don't want to buy the hardback now. I would also recommend other Myerson novels. I definitely would suggest Sleepwalking and Something Might Happen. Both are really, really good and go around the other stuff too. But let me know what you think of this novel. If you've already read it, let me know in the comments. Let me know if you have thoughts about the kind of ethical quandaries here about writing about children with just generally or with addictions more specifically. Yeah, let's get into it in the comments below in a nice way, please. And do let me know what you're reading. If you've got any recommendations for me, that would be great. Until the next time, the next video, please keep reading, stay well, stay healthy, look after each other, and see you soon.